Hurricane Irma disrupts lives through the southeast. And UNCP was determined not to be caught unprepared. We've got those stories and what happened on campus while our show was on hiatus. Welcome back for another semester of Carolina News Today. Several offices on campus had already started relief efforts for Texans hit by Hurricane Harvey when they had to shift gears and think about Hurricane Irma heading towards North Carolina. While not expecting the kind of flooding caused by Matthew last October, some on campus still worried about water in low-lying areas. The administration advised students to leave Pembroke after Friday classes and to keep checking over the weekend for notice of cancellations. They said attendance policies would be relaxed for the week. Some faculty pushed exams and assignments further into next week just to simplify things. I didn't have any classes canceled, but I did have um, exams postponed to Friday, which is really good. I'm actually pretty excited about that. Um, homework assignments, one of them was pushed back for my political science class, um, but other than that, no. So It's like only seven people out of 20 people in the class, so I'm assuming everybody you know, took notice and evacuated real quick. Uh, I actually had two out of my three classes canceled today and my class for tomorrow is actually canceled too. By the time Hurricane Irma got to North Florida, she was clearly headed to Nashville, and the Carolinas ended up with only thunderstorms. Though they went on for hours, we'll have more on the impact of Irma coming up later in this program. Before the storm hit, Pembroke had a beautiful weekend. The sun shone on the university's 9-11 day of service. The Office of Community and Civic Engagement sent students to local nonprofits to assist the disabled, to provide cleanup, and to prepare food bags in advance of the hurricane. There was a table specifically for disaster preparedness and to honor first responders. Students say the annual event is a meaningful experience. And I wanted to do it because I mean I feel like I like uh, volunteering. It's something that I'm real passionate about. And uh, especially in light of everything of the hurricane, especially in light of uh, the hurricane from last year. But it was a nice experience. Sunday's viewing party for the Miss America pageant had been canceled in advance of Irma, which wasn't so bad because Pembroke alumna Victoria Huggins didn't make the top 15 and therefore wasn't featured on the show. It's been a dry spell for any Miss North Carolina in the national competition, 56 years since taking the top crown. But Victoria comes back home now to complete a year-long reign in her home state. When she was crowned Miss North Carolina back in June, she told CNT that even when she doesn't win a pageant, she still gets good exposure for her platform. Alzheimer's research, including music therapy. That really means a lot to me because it's touched my life, being able to go to nursing homes and interact with these families and see how my passion for music can really help connect with the memories that they're not able to attain because of these, this illness. So it really is special and important to me that I can be an advocate, whether I'm Miss America or if I get to remain as Miss North Carolina. Victoria majored in mass communications at UNCP and sat at this very desk as an anchor for Carolina News Today. She says she got good at multitasking while competing in a pageant as a full-time student. Well, it was such a juggling act for me to be at UNCP being a full-time student, getting my major in broadcasting, mass communication, and then getting my double minor in music and religion. So always a type A personality, but then add in community service and working out and whole nine yards with Miss North Carolina. But I think it really prepared me for the job. Miss North Carolina is a full-time job. So Victoria had to give up her position at WECT in Wilmington, where she worked on their morning news. She's now a grad student at Johns Hopkins University. The newly crowned Miss America is Miss North Dakota, Kara Mund. She gets a $50,000 scholarship and a six-figure salary for her reign. An overheated fan in the Livermore Library caused a disruption over the summer. It sparked a small fire in a small computer lab. The sprinkler system quickly extinguished the fire, but that caused water damage to other spaces. Renovations to that room and to the special collections area below started almost immediately. Book collections also had to be treated. Administrators were determined to get the library ready for the start of the semester. Overall, the repairs are costing about $230,000. 
the solar eclipse generated a lot of excitement on campus when the semester started. It was standing room only in the library for a talk by physics professor Jose Deruda in advance of the big day. Dr. Deruda explained the science behind this rare alignment of sun and moon. He gave tips on viewing and some history of astronomy equipment. <clears throat> the first 100 in attendance received safety glasses for looking at the eclipse. University employees and students gathered together to witness the rare natural phenomenon on August 21st. Some purchased glasses ahead of time, some got creative and made viewers from cereal boxes, and some used the indirect method. A welder's mask could be used if it was the right kind. A few professors decided this occurrence was worth bringing their classes outside. Some said they were excited to have experienced it because it would not happen again in the U.S. until 2024. Congressman Robert Pittenger faced a skeptical audience at a town hall meeting in Lumberton. It was a nearly two-hour heated discussion about topics such as Planned Parenthood, the Affordable Care Act, and racism. Pittenger had made controversial comments on race in the past. One man in the audience asked him if he'd ever worked on any known advocates of white supremacy. Absolutely not, Pittenger said. A health care advocate in the audience said the congressman skirted most of the issues and failed to get into specifics. I felt that he was extremely vague with many of his answers, not direct um, responses. He obviously had talking points that he sort of stuck to, so I didn't feel that he answered my question and I really didn't feel that he answered it. The only question he gave a definitive answer to was on the um, minimum wage. On that topic of minimum wage, the congressman said he was opposed to any increase. Pittenger has held several town hall meetings around the state this semester, some of them more heated than this one. Local football victories get fans excited across our viewing area. And Braves cross country climbs up in the rankings. Sports are up next with Dolphus Pearson the third. UNCP Braves football traveled to Elizabeth City State to mark the first ever matchup between the two schools. The Braves dominated the game with a 66-14 win over the Vikings. On the offensive side, Miles Grant rushed for 95 yards while also getting a second quarter touchdown for the Braves. And on the defensive side, Donovan Work bested the team with three sacks. Work was also named ECAC Rookie of the Week. The Braves' next game will be at home against the Catawba Indians. This should be an interesting game to watch because former quarterback for the Braves, Patrick O'Brien will be playing for the Indians. Patrick has never lost at Grace P. Johnson Stadium, and I spoke with him on the phone, and he is confident that he will not be defeated this time. I'm trying to just stay calm and even killed by the situation. You know, I don't want to add any added pressure that doesn't need to be there. But, um, yeah, it's definitely been circled on my calendar since I left Pembroke um, for reasons that are undisclosed, you know. Um, but I'm excited. I can't wait to be out there. I uh, haven't lost at Grace P. Johnson, and I don't plan on losing this weekend either. Lumberton and West Brunswick battled it out with their first wins on the line. Lumberton came out on top with a score of 21-14. Big plays from the defense late in the game helped Lumberton come out on top. The defense forced three turnovers and kept West Brunswick to just one touchdown for the rest of the game. Lumberton's defense really showed their bend but don't break mentality against the Trojans' offense. Battling through injury, Montrez Howell had 65 rushing yards, which helped him knock off the rust for the rest of the season. This win will give the Pirates a much needed confidence boost going into conference play against Hope. We had a special day in Longbird this past weekend as St. Andrews University hosted their first ever home football game. Bagpipes were out, fans were loud, and the Knights of St. Andrews were anxious to take on the field against the Cincinnati Christian Eagles. Let's get right into the action. Knights running back Trevor McNeil finds the end zone on a five yard run to record the first ever touchdown at the Knights Stadium. That would give St. Andrews an early 6-0 lead with 7.58 left in the first quarter. On the defensive side of the ball, defensive end Cody Edmondson lays a huge hit on Eagles quarterback Brandon Walmerdorf that results in a turnover on downs. Scotland County native Deshaun Ferguson finds Tyler Carr on a 25-yard connection down the middle to set up first and goal for the Knights on the Eagles 17-yard line. Trevor McNeil must have heard Coach Harper loud and clear. He bulldozes through Cincinnati Christian defenders and a helmet to post another score for St. Andrews in the first half. He would finish the day with 17 carries for 136 yards and three touchdowns. 
five different nights with quarter touchdowns in the historic opener as St. Andrews will go on to throttle Cincinnati Christian 48 to 25. The UNCP volleyball team fell short to Belmont Abbey over the weekend, but battled back for a win against Shawan in the second game at the Francis Marion Invitational. During the Invitational, Madeline Ashwell almost doubled her career high in digs, and Tyler Fitzpatrick earned a season high in kills. Due to Hurricane Irma, the Braves have six days off until their next match against Lander. This will start their Peach Belt Conference play. The men's and women's cross-country team ran under the moonlight at the Queen's Twilight Invitational. Both teams finished second place at the Invitational. Silas Kupkowicz led the team to a first-place finish individually, alongside Logan Ward, who came in eighth place for the Braves. On the women's side, Kristen Kane led the way for the Braves. She matched the fifth-best 5K time in school history. This second-place finish moved up the men's team to fourth place in the Southeast Regional Rankings. The team will be back in action in Nashville, Tennessee at the D2 Showcase. The UNCP women's soccer team snuck past Anderson with a score of 1-0 on Saturday. The only goal of the game was an own goal by the Trojans. This is a two-match winning streak for the Braves. The Braves fired off three shots in the first nine minutes of the game. And head coach Lars Anderson said it, was a pretty, it wasn't a pretty game, but they found a way to get the win. The Braves' next game will be at Belmont Abbey, continuing their five-game road trip. That's it for sports. Back to the studio. Thanks, Dolphus. And that's it for us here in the studio. Be sure to tune in next week for another episode of Carolina News Today.